Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the first of the 2012 Budget Committee meetings in January. Uh, we have two discussion items today, uh, the main item being the overview of the 2012 operating capital budget. Uh, we have no regrets from members of the committee today. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Okay, I see none. Any member of the public wishing to speak further regarding an issue on the 2012 Budget Committee agenda may appear before Council at its, at its meeting on January 23rd, 2012 at 7 p.m. when the recommendations from this meeting will go forward for final consideration. If you wish to speak as a delegation, please sign the sheet located at the back of the room or notify the Clerk's Department no later than noon the day of the Council meeting. Any PowerPoint presentations must also be forwarded to the Clerk's Department no later than noon the day of the meeting. As I said, there's two discussion items. The first one is the overview of the 2012 operating and capital budget, followed by the 2012 pre-budget consultation item. Uh, both will offer an opportunity for members of the public that are here today to speak if they wish to. Uh, we will start with opening remarks from Mr. Ray Green, and I welcome you. We've got the presentation on the overhead in a moment. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and um, welcome to the members of the committee and the audience. Uh, certainly, approving the town's annual budget is the key responsibility of Council. It is Council's role to set the financial goals, expenditure limits, because the town, unlike other levels of government, is not able to run a deficit. And it is our role as staff to bring forward a budget that allows you to achieve the goals within the limits you have set for the town. Nancy Sully, the town's Director of Finance and Deputy Treasurer, will be walking you through the 212 or 2012 operating and capital budgets. But before she does, uh, I'd like to, to speak to you about a few of the key themes that has driven the town's prefer the staff's preparation uh, of the 2012 budget. The town has two critical planning initiatives that influences the preparation of the budget. First, there is council strategic plan, which drives our annual budget process, which focuses uh, on what you'll be looking at over the next six weeks. The second initiative is Vision 2057, which is a broader community building framework that will sh shape our updated 10-year uh, capital forecast, which we'll bring to you later uh, this year or early next year. But let's talk about the immediate first. Council's four-year strategic plan, which was approved last July, sets out the priorities for this term of office. Every department's business plan and budget is driven by that strategic priority. All of these priorities all begin with the vision of making Oakville the most livable town in Canada. Over the past five years, Council has built new facilities and provided enhanced services to achieve this vision. Council has invested in ensuring our community infrastructure is in a good state of repair. Our roads, our bridges, our stormwater management facilities, and our tree canopy. All of these work towards making the town the most, uh, help achieve the most livable town in Canada. And this investment has been done in a very fiscally responsible manner. One of Council's strategic priorities was to ensure fiscal sustainability of our community. We have kept our debt levels well with, below the provincial levels. We have maintained responsible level of reserves. We have not burdened our future generations with debt. Yes, this has meant the town has had to increase property taxes to pay for these new facilities, but every year staff reviews its program spending and identifies potential e efficiencies to keep the increase as affordable as possible. You'll recall back in 2008, for example, when the town saw that revenues were going to drop dramatically as a result of the global uh, economic challenges, we immediately implemented a mandatory expenditure control program that resulted in over $5 million in savings, and we held 40 positions vacant to help reduce the budget pressures. The economic recovery has been slow. We know that the times are still challenging. In fact, we may be even slipping into another recession. We know our pre-budget consultation that the public is concerned about the affordability and ensuring their tax dollars are spent efficiently and effectively. We also know those from those cons consultations that the public continues to value the programs and services and the community infrastructure that makes Oakville livable. So this budget proposes an overall increase of 3% to the tax rate, 
in order to maintain those programs and services and, main program, and maintain progress towards uh, the infrastructure being in a state of good repair. In this budget, we are not proposing to rate our reserves or simply take on debt to keep taxes artificially low. That would simply be short-term gain for long-term pain. We've identified for the Budget Committee various programs and services where Oakville does provide services at a higher level than perhaps other municipalities should you wish to target further reductions. We are also beginning a program of service delivery reviews to ensure that we continue to deliver our services as, as effectively and efficiently as possible. These reviews will build upon the town's program-based budgeting to assess outcomes against program objectives. This approach reflects the town's commitment to effectively managing its resources to protect the programs and services valued by our community. I've worked for the town for over 35 years and I've always found that the town has operated in this very fiscal, prudent way. As a resident and a taxpayer, I've always appreciated this commitment. As a long-term resident whose children have also chose to settle in this community, I truly value what it does have to offer its residents. When I look at the new facilities that Council has built, I see facilities that are not only well utilized, but are being embraced and celebrated by the community. Only last December, hundreds of people came out to celebrate the 10th anniversary of Iroquois Ridge. Over the Christmas break, Oakville hosted 158 hockey teams from six countries at the Richard Bell Memorial Tournament. Your investment in community infrastructure has provided more opportunities for youth to participate in recreational activities. With the opening of Queen Elizabeth Park Community Center, we'll provide those same types of opportunities for arts to be enjoyed by both the youth and the adults. Our transit ridership has re reached records levels thanks to the enhancements that have been approved by Council this past several years. I realize, though, that transit can be a very divisive in the community. It is certainly valued more by those who regularly use it than the non-unions. Uh, as many members of the committee recognize, that transit plays a key role, though, in the two public concerns of traffic and air quality. But there is also an ongoing concern with the cost of providing transit. So at the direction of the Budget Committee, Barry Cole, the town's director of transit, has reviewed low-performing routes and will be identifying options to help make his service more efficient. As staff is ready to respond to other issues raised by the co Budget Committee throughout this process, we look forward to engaging you. And in a few moments, I'll turn this uh, uh, presentation over to Nancy, but I did want to address very quickly the 10-year the capital forecast. As I mentioned, it will be coming later this year or perhaps at the latest early next year. That's because we have a number of major studies which to undertake. The Parks Recreation Culture Master, or Library Master Plan, the Transportation Master Plan, and Development Charges, to name a few. Uh, all of these will be done under the Vision 2057 and will engage the community in charting a course for our community for its, uh, for its future. So at this time, I'd like to bring Nancy forward and she'll walk you through an overview of the particulars of the 2012 budget. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Uh, good morning. The budget process began last June with the election of the Budget Committee Chair. At that time, we presented a base budget forecast and budget guidelines were adopted. Beginning in July right through to November, program staff developed the 2012 budget and two-year forecast. As well, service level templates were prepared for all town programs and two additional budget committee meetings were held in September and October to review those service level templates and get further direction from the budget committee. The staff budget was then reviewed by the financial planning department to ensure that it met the guidelines and was then forwarded to our executive management team for a thorough review. The budget being presented today represents the outcome of that process. Budget guidelines approved in July directed staff to prepare the 2012 budget with an overall increase in line with inflation. At that time, based on the estimated increase for the town and the region, 
$5 million in reductions would be required to meet this guideline. To assist staff in determining where to focus reduction, service level templates were prepared for all town programs. The service level templates provided details on each program and as well compared our services to three surrounding municipalities, Burlington, Mississauga and Guelph. As well, staff identified services within each program that we offer at an enhanced level, a level that's higher than either legislatively, le legislatively required or that most municipalities offer. Additional guidelines were given to staff in October, directing us to continue reviewing all programs to identify savings, as well to maximize the cost recovery of our programs and to report on outcomes resulting from enhancements to programs. As a response to this motion will be provided by our commissioners during their presentations later this week. Today marks the first day in the public review process for the 2012 budget. Commissioners will be presenting program overviews for the programs within their commission later this week. As well, public delegations are scheduled for February 2nd and 7th. I do want to note that in the reports in today's agenda, it says the delegations are February 2nd and 9th. That's a, a, an actual typo. The, the dates are the 2nd and the 7th. We have given a two-week break between the Commission presentations on Friday, Thursday and Friday and the public delegations to allow Council and the Budget Committee time to review the budget documents that you received this morning. We have also scheduled three budget open houses to provide an informal setting for the residents in the community to gather more information about the 2012 budget. Two meetings have also been scheduled for, public deli for budget deliberations February 9th and 14th and council approval of the 2012 budget is targeted for March 5th, 2012. The 2012 budget maintains the services value by our residents. The citizen survey conducted in 2011 indicates that our residents are happy with the services they receive. We know that not every resident values every service the same, but they're all important to our community. The budget achieves the guideline of an overall increase in line with inflation, while incorporating the operating costs of new facilities, roads and parks, including the opening of the Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Centre, which adds $1.3 million to the 2012 budget. The budget, the budget ensures the town continues to operate in a fiscally sustainable manner, ensuring sufficient funding to maintain our town's infrastructure in a state of good repair, and as well provide the resources to operate our town programs and maintain new infrastructure assumed through growth. This is the fifth budget using performance-based program-based budgeting methodology, or PB2. The budget focuses on programs and the services within those programs. Emphasis has been placed on determining if planned outcomes have been achieved. A separate document distributed today provides the outcomes for all of our programs and services, including 2011 projected outcomes and targets for 2012. In keeping with the focus on outcomes and to ensure our tax dollars are being spent wisely, commissioners will be presenting the outcomes that have been achieved over the past five years on programs that have received additional funding. A key component of PB2 is to measure results to ensure desired outcomes have been achieved and to make adjustments based on those results if necessary. Developing the budget with an overall increase in line with inflation presents a key challenge to to the town as municipal inflation often does not coincide with CPI because the basket of goods and services used to calculate CPI is different than municipal inflation. To minimize the impact of inflationary increases, program revenues have been reviewed to ensure that we are maintaining our cost recovery ratios and not putting more pressure on the tax levy. A third challenge is development activity. A slowdown in development impacts our programs such as building planning and development engineering. Reduced development activity also affects our development charge collections used to fund growth-related projects in our capital budget. Another key challenge is incorporating the operating impacts of completed capital projects. Opening new facilities and maintaining new infrastructure adds pressure to the operating budget. In addition to inflationary pressures, the budget must also provide sufficient funding to maintain and replace existing assets. 
the capital levy, infrastructure levy, and increase funding for hot mix paving provide important sources of funding for infrastructure renewal portion of our capital budget and are necessary to ensure the funding gap or infrastructure gap faced by municipalities does not continue to grow. These levies account for 2.1% of the tax levy increase in the town's portion of the budget. As I mentioned, CPI does not necessarily reflect the municipal basket of goods. Some of our costs, especially those that are construction related, tend to increase at a higher rate. CPI has been averaging 3% over 2011, and therefore the budget has been prepared with an overall increase of 3% in line with inflation. <coughs> Wage pressures resulting from union contracts range from 2 to 3% in the budget. As well, the budget contains the impact of the final year of the hydro rebasing, which adds $352,000 to the town street lighting budget. And although this is revenue neutral for hydro, it takes the costs away from residents, it does add it to the town's budget. As well, the budget has to include the increase for the OMERS rates. This rate increase was announced in 2011 and is phased in over 2011, 12, and 13, and adds 1% to OMERS rates for both employees and employers. Inflationary pressures have added 4.4% to the base budget. Staff were directed to maintain or improve the cost recovery of town programs. As part of the staff budget preparation, all program revenues were reviewed. Fee increases required to maintain cost recovery or improve the recovery of programs where possible were presented to the Budget Committee in November. Many of the fee increases approved by the Budget Committee in November have, been have become effective January 1st and are expected to uh, include, uh, achieve $1.3 million in additional revenue in the 2012 budget. As well, all of our program revenue volumes were reviewed, and based on this, an additional $2.3 million in revenue is included in the 2012 budget. While it is important to ensure our programs remain competitive, it's also important to ensure that our fees reflect the increased cost of delivering services. If fees don't keep pace with the increased costs, it provides a further burden on the general tax levy. Since the downturn in the economy in 2009, mitigation measures have been in place to offset the impact of reduced revenue in our planning, building and development engineering programs. A significant number of positions were gapped over the last few years, as well tax stabilization funding was used to offset the impact on the tax levy. The stabilization funding has been gradually removed from the budget over the past two years, and some of the gap positions have been filled as revenues have increased. The revenue budgets for these programs have increased by $2 million in 2012. This reflects both fee increases as well as volume increases. This has allowed us to remove the remaining tax stabilization funding from the budget. In total, $1.7 million in tax stabilization funding has been removed from these programs. There is still some tax levy support remaining in the fee supported portions of the programs. However, the Commission is currently engaged in a process re-engineering review project which will streamline processes to gain efficiencies and refine the splits between revenue and tax supported activities. The results of this exercise will be presented to Council later in 2012. It is anticipated that once this exercise has been completed, the reliance on the tax levy will be further reduced. In the interim, 16.5 positions remain gapped within this Commission. New facilities and infrastructure built as part of the capital budget, as well as new roads and infrastructure assumed as part of the development process, add to the operating budget, as the cost to maintain and operate the facilities and infrastructure are incorporated into our base. The cost of maintaining and operating new infrastructure adds $2.7 million to the 2012 budget. This includes the opening of the Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Centre, the annualized impact of the new transit facility, as well as new parks, roads, and the continuation of our Emerald Ashbor initiative. This represents a 2% increase on the town's portion of the tax bill, or 0.8% on the overall tax increase. Assessment growth generates new taxes without increasing the tax rate. Assessment growth results from new properties added to the tax roll or increased assessment as a result of improvements or additions to existing properties. It does not result from assessment increases on properties due to CVA. 
In June, assessment growth was estimated to be 1.5%. However, the role that was returned by MPAC has growth at 1.15%. This reduction reflects a decline in the development activity that we have seen over the past couple of years. It results in a 1.15% reduction on the town's tax rate or 0.4% on the overall tax bill. This chart summarizes the increases that I've identified on the previous slides. The base budget increase to maintain existing service levels and ensure sufficient funding to maintain and operate new infrastructure is 4.6% on the town's portion of the tax bill, or 1.7% on the overall tax bill, $17 per 100,000 of assessment. This is 1.3% below the forecast that was presented to the Budget Committee in June, reflecting $2.3 million in reductions to costs. The 4.6% increase translates into $7.7 .7 million before assessment growth. Six programs account for $5.6 million, or 73% of this increase. The largest increase is in the combined programs of recreation and culture and total at $1.56 million or 20% of the overall increase. And this reflects the operating cost of opening QE, Q, uh, sorry, QE Park Community and Cultural Centre. The second largest increase is in emergency services which includes our fire department at $1.45 million. And this includes increased cost of salaries, wages and benefits, as well as an increased transfer to fire equipment reserves to ensure sufficient funding in our long-term forecast to re renew and replace our fire vehicles. The next largest program increase is in parks and open space at $1 million and includes the increased cost of maintaining new parkland as well as funding to continue our EAB initiative. $821,000 of the increase is in the infrastructure maintenance program. This includes the $352,000 impact of hydro rebasing on our street lighting budget, as well as the increased cost of, of maintaining the town's transportation and water resource infrastructure systems. And finally, Oakville Transit's budget has a net increase of $745,000 and includes the operating cost of the new transit facility. The capital levy was introduced in 1996 and has served the town well. It provides an important source of funding for our capital budget. And while it does add 1% to the tax <coughs> levy each year, it recognizes the funding need for infrastructure renewal, as well as the town's share of growth-related projects. The Municipal Act does not require us to budget for amortization costs. However, we must budget to replace and, and refurbish our assets. Therefore, we do this through our transfers to capital and reserves. Under PSAB regulations, we are now required to report on what the increase to our tax levy would be if we budget for amortization and post-employment liabilities. We will be bringing this information to the Budget Committee during the process. However, based on information gathered by a neighboring municipality, Oakville's gap between transfers to reserves and capital and amortization is considerably lower than many of the surrounding municipalities. Only one municipality or region compared more favorably than Oakville. One of the reasons we show such favorable results is because we have an increasing funding source for infrastructure renewal. The base operating budget for the town has increased by 4.6%. The capital levy and increased funding for hot mix paving add an additional 1.2% to the town's share of the tax bill. The tax shift from the region represents the town's share of the tax room created by the uploading of social services costs at the regional <coughs> level and adds 0.9% to the town's tax bill. This increase does not increase the total tax bill as the region's budget included a reduction of the same amount. In total, the town's increase, including the capital levy, the tax shift from the region and increased funding for hot mix paving is 6.7%. This represents a 3% increase on the overall tax bill and assumes education rates do not change, as has been the case over the past several years. The overall increase is what residents will see on their tax bill and can, can be compared to increases being reported by single-tier municipalities such as Toronto, Hamilton and Guelph. It achieves Council's guideline of an overall increase in line with inflation. The town's total tax rate includes 0.9% as a result of the tax shift from the region. 
As I mentioned, the tax room created by the phase out of the GTA pooling is being shared between the region and local municipalities, with 50% staying with the region and the remaining 50% shared by the area municipalities. This is a significant funding source for capital, and while it adds 0.9% to the town's tax bill, it reduces the region's rate by the same amount, and therefore there is no impact on the overall taxpayer. The operating budget is made up of two components, gross expenditures and revenues. This slide shows the gross expenditures of $239 million by, by program. This is the total cost of running the town's programs and services. The largest programs, as can be seen here, are corporate revenue and expenses at 17.5%, followed by emergency services, infrastructure maintenance, recreation services, and Oakville Transit. Corporate revenue and expenses includes expenses not specific to a particular program, such as transfers to capital and infrastructure reserves, debt charges, and miscellaneous corporate expenditures. This chart breaks down the gross expenditures by cost component rather than program. And as you can see, the largest component is salaries, wages, and benefits at 50.7%, followed by purchase services at 11.9%. As Ray said, the Municipal Act requires us to produce a balanced budget. This chart shows the funding sources for the $239 million in expenditures. The difference between specific revenue sources and gross expenditures represents the required tax levy. Based on the staff recommended budget, taxation accounts for 61.1% of overall revenues. This is followed by fees and charges at 22.2%. This chart shows how much of each $100 in taxes paid is spent on the various components of the town's budget. The allocation of tax dollars differs from the allocation of gross expenditures, as many of the town's programs are supported partially or entirely from user fees. And as the slide shows, for each $100 of taxes paid, over $20 goes towards infrastructure renewal, 19.3 to emergency services, all the way down to $2 per $100 for culture. The 2013 and 2014 forecasts are presented for information to assist the Budget Committee and Council in looking at the current projected tax increases over this term of Council. The projections include inflationary increases, the operating impacts of our current long-term financial forecast, including the annualized impact of the Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Centre, 20 new firefighters that will be required for our temporary fire station 9, and the maintenance of new infrastructure. The forecast does not include any service enhancements or the annualized impact of any new requests that may be approved through the 2012 budget process. Council has directed that the 2013 and 2014 budgets be prepared with an overall increase in line with inflation, similar to the direction for 2012. The forecast does not include a provisional levy for the contribution to the new hospital at this time. Staff are currently evaluating funding models to determine the best option to meet this obligation. A recommendation on funding will be brought forward to Council during 2012, and based on the outcome of that, it will be incorporated into our long-term financial forecast to be updated later this year. It should be noted that the 2013 and 2014 forecast assumes permanent reductions to expenditures of $750,000 to be found through efficiency reviews, which will take place during 2012 and 2013. This chart, this chart highlights the components making up the proposed increase for 2012, as well as the forecasted increase for 2013 and 2014. For 2013 and 14, we have assumed 1% in increased assessment. As you can see from the chart, the largest driver of the increase in each year is inflationary impacts, followed by the capital-driven operating costs of new infrastructure and then our infrastructure levies. This chart summarizes the overall tax impact for 2012 to 2014. The increase shown for the region of Halton is taken from the 2012 budget and business plan. Education rates, again, have been assumed not to increase. One other item of note is the tax shift from the region. There is no impact in 2014 as the uploading of the GTA pooling is completed in 2013. Again, the forecast includes no increases to service levels beyond those implemented through the existing capital budget. 
the CAO and commissioners have not recommended any new requests in order to keep the overall tax increase in line with inflation. As Ray said, there are many master plans being updated currently, as well as the development charges background study. The operating impacts shown on this slide are based on our current long-term financial forecast, and this will be updated during the year and will be reflected in our 2013 and future budgets. During the Budget Committee meeting held on October 12, 2011, a delegation to the committee provided information regarding tax levy increases from 2006 to 2010. A commitment was made that staff would provide an explanation for this increase. A response was provided to the delegate on Friday and all members of council were copied on the response. In reviewing the tax increases during that time period, we went back and looked at the enhancements that were included in the budget. And I've grouped them under different categories, service enhancements to ensure safety and the health of the community, new parks and facilities to support active living, environmental initiatives to support our tree canopy, our stormwater pond monitoring, as well as environmental policies, increased resources for transit, and sufficient funding to ensure our infrastructure remains in a state of good repair. There are several reasons why the tax levy increases. Each year during the budget process, staff present an overview of the budget, identifying the key challenges faced in preparing the budget, including inflationary pressures, revenue pressures, and service enhancements required to improve service to our residents and ensure Council's strategic plan is achieved. In addition, options to reduce the tax levy increase are provided. It's often the options to reduce the tax levy increase that garner the most attention from our residents. Over the past term of Council, a commitment was made to catch up on needed facilities within the town. The budget for the years in question include the cost to operate two new arenas and a new youth centre. As well, to improve fire response times, 20 additional firefighters were added to the complement in 2008 to meet industry best practices and make the assembling of fire attack teams more efficient. Fire prevention staff were also increased to provide fire prevention in all six districts within the town and a new fire training officer was added to facilitate training of new firefighters and provide specialty rescue training. Additional funding was also provided to increase current long-range and heritage planning support. These increased resources supported the development of the new official plan, Livable Oakville, and ensured the town is developed in accordance with planning policies. Over the same time period, new parkland was developed and road and stormwater infrastructure added due to growth. The cost of maintaining the new infrastructure impacts our operating budget. Residents place a high value on the town's environment. Council's strategic plan sets a target of 40% for the town's tree canopy. To ensure the target is met, the town has put in place a private tree bylaw, funded EAB and gypsy moth initiatives to protect our existing tree canopy, as well as increased funding to maintain the town's wood lots and water new trees to help ensure their survival. Several environmental policies have been put in place to reduce the town's carbon footprint. These come at a cost, but also help ensure Oakville remains a desirable place to live and work. Sufficient fund, su significant funding increases were also made to improve and expand transit service. This is a long-term strategy to reduce pressure on the town's road network and reduce vehicle emissions and supports the town's transportation master plan objectives and council strategic priorities. As well, significant funding was included in the budget for infrastructure renewal. I'm sorry if this chart's a little bit hard to read, but the chart identifies the drivers of the tax increase as reported by the resident. In total, based on the annual report, it shows that the taxes increased from 2006 to 2010 by 38.5 percent, or $35.9 million. It's important to note that the tax levy is a net increase after revenues, and therefore all the service enhancements shown here are also net of revenues. The total increase is shown includes $4.3 million as a result of the town's policy to add 1% each year to the budget as a capital levy. In addition, beginning in 2010, an additional $250,000 is being added to provide increased funding for our hot mix paving program. As well, the tax shift from the region, as I spoke about earlier, while it does not increase the cost to the overall taxpayer, it has increased our tax levy between 2006 and 2010 in a total of $5 million. In total, the two levies account for $9.4 million of the tax increase over this period of time and are used in our capital budget to support infrastructure renewal. 
As I mentioned earlier in my presentation, data gathered by a neighboring municipality shows that Oakville is doing better than most in terms of providing sufficient funding for infrastructure renewal, with budgeted transfers to reserves and capital coming within 5% of the town's amortization costs. It's important to note that municipalities are not required to budget for amortization or depreciation expense, and therefore Oakville, like most municipalities, does not include amortization expense in the annual budget, but rather budgets for transfers to capital and reserves to maintain and replace existing infrastructure. This adds significant pressure on our operating budget, but it is necessary to ensure the financial sustainability of the municipality, as deferred maintenance, while keeping, helping to keep the cost, the tax increases low in the short term, will eventually catch up and result in significant tax increases in the future. This leaves approximately $26.5 million of the increase that was included in the operating budget. And this chart, I've, I've identified some of the service enhancements that I spoke about earlier. This just shows the cost of some of those. Our new fire enhancements added $2.5 million over that time period. The opening of Joshua's Creek Arena and 16 Mile Sports Complex, 822,000. Our transit service enhancements added $3 million. In total, the service enhancements added $12 million to the tax levy between 2006 and 2010. This leaves a net increase of $14.5 million, and this reflects our inflationary pressures on our budget, as well as the pressures from reduced revenues over that time period. Between 2006 and 2010, we had the downturn in the economy. Approximately $2 million of that $14.5 million was the result of reduced revenues within our planning, building, and development engineering programs. Included in the uh, report, included in today's agenda, there's a chart showing the items re referred to the Budget Committee for consideration. They're also shown in Table 11, page E18 in the Executive Summary in the Budget Discussion Document. There are only three referrals at the present time. The Customer Service Strategy, which has been addressed in our proposed budget, a request to report back on the distribution of advertising purchases. This will be reported on by our Director of Strategy, Policy and Communications during her presentation on Thursday. And finally, that green energy purchases to meet the 2014 greenhouse gas emission reduction target be brought forward to the 2012 Budget Committee. The purchase of the offsets has been included in the 2012 to 2014 budgets as presented. The overall increase of the proposed 2012 budget is 3%. The budget delivers on Council's priorities and maintains service levels. It is fiscally sustainable and ensures the programs and services valued by our residents are maintained. It also ensures sufficient funding to operate and maintain new infrastructure and ensure our existing infrastructure remains in a state of good repair. The budget is laid out in three separate documents to assist the Budget Committee and Council in the decision process. The first document is the large binder, and that includes the executive summary providing an overview of the 2012 budget, as well as program um, business plans for each of the town's 26 programs. The business plans include a summary of the services within that program, the staff complement required to provide the program, as well as the gross and net operating cost of each program. It also includes achievements that have been made over the past year and objectives for the program during 2012. The second document is the performance measure document. This document provides pro performance measures for each of the town's programs and many of our services and includes projected outcomes for 2011 as well as targeted outcomes for 2012. The final document is the 2012 capital budget and forecast. This provides an overview of our current 10-year forecast, as well as a detailed project sheet for each project within our 10-year plan. The total recommended 2012 capital budget is $59.9 million. The largest component of the capital budget is infrastructure planning and improvements, and includes new road infrastructure improvements to service growth, as well as funds to rehabilitate our existing infrastructure and also includes the 250000 in additional funding for our hot mix paving program. The second largest component is parks and open space at 17.3% or $10.3 million. This includes $1.5 million for the 16 Mile Creek West Shore Landscape Rehabilitation and $1.5 million for our Emerald Ashborough Initiative, as well as funding for parks infrastructure rehabilitation and new parks resulting from growth. 
The third largest component of the capital budget is infrastructure maintenance at 10.7%. This includes $4.3 million for the 2012 roads and work share of the new North Operations Depot being built over 2012 and 13. Growth projects represent 37% of the 2012 capital budget. The growth projects included in the capital budget reflect what is affordable based on a revised 2009 development charge rates approved as part of the settlement of the 2009 development charges bylaw, as well as the most recent population growth estimates. This reflects the slowdown in development and projects have been moved out to reflect the timing of when they will be required based on our expected growth. The remainder of the budget is for infrastructure renewal or non-growth. The non-growth portion of the budget reflects data gathered through our asset management program, reflecting the life cycles of the town's assets. This chart identifies the funding sources for the 2012 capital budget. The largest funding source is development charges at 33%, followed by our capital levy at 28.7%. And again, the capital levy is a primary source of funding used to support the rehabilitation of the town's infrastructure. Reserves and reserve funds represent the third largest funding source at $17.1 million and include contributions from equipment reserves, the capital reserve, and program-specific reserve funds such as our building maintenance and replacement reserve fund. No debt is required to fund the 2012 capital budget. This chart lists the top 10 largest dollar value projects in the 2012 budget. Hot Mix Paving is the largest project at $4.8 million. The North Operations Depot is the second largest project. The 2012 infrastructure maintenance portion totals $4.3 million. As well, $1.7 million is budgeted in emergency services to fund the interim Fire Station 9, which will be housed in the North Depot. To complete the project, an additional $4.9 million is budgeted in 2013. Other notable projects include the construction of a four-lane urban major arterial roadway on third line between Dundas Street and New Burnham Thorpe for $3.2 million and the extension of the North Service Road to Joshua's Creek for $3.1 million. As well, $2.9 million has been budgeted for the replacement of conventional buses at the end of their life cycle. This slide shows the projected reserve balances based on our, for our proposed operating and capital budgets. Our projected reserve balances at the end of 2012 are $145.8 million, just slightly below the ending balance in 2011, reflecting the decline in development charge collections. There is no new debt being issued to fund the 2012 capital budget. However, there is $3.3 million of debt that will be issued during 2012 for prior year approved capital projects. After debt repayment, we are projecting that our outstanding debt at the end of 2012 will be $63.9 million. 74% of this is for self-supported debt, which will be repaid through future development charge collections, harbour revenues, as well as funds from the Oakville Soccer Club for the repayment of the indoor facility. The capital budget presented today includes a preliminary 10-year capital forecast. This forecast will be updated during 2012, reflecting the outcomes of various financial planning initiatives currently underway. The development charges background study will determine the funding envelope available to fund growth-related capital projects. The revised long-term financial forecast will include a 10-year projection of capital and operating needs to achieve Council's strategic priorities, master plans and infrastructure needs both for renewal and growth. The impact on operating costs arising from new facilities, the town's debt levels and reserves and reserve funds, as well as future tax requirements will also be considered. This forecast will be presented back to Council in late 2012 or early 2013. The 10-year capital program totals $882 million. As can be seen from the slide, engineering construction or infrastructure planning uh, has the greatest share of the project spending and accounts for 45.5% of the 10-year budget. This chart shows the funding sources for the forecast. Development charges is the largest source of funding, however, because a larger percentage of the forecast is for non-growth projects, the contribution from operating and reserves provides a larger percentage of our total funding. 
The operating contribution assumes a continuation of the 1% capital levy, which, which provides a significant source of funding for our capital program. As well, the local infrastructure funding resulting from the tax shift from the region contributes 7.7% of the funding for the 10-year forecast. Approximately 54% of the forecast is for non-growth related projects and the remaining 46% for growth related projects. Growth projects included, include new infrastructure and equipment to meet the demands of new growth. The non-growth portion is for infrastructure renewal and the maintenance of our existing assets. The growth portion of the forecast is funded 72% from development charges. Not all of the funding for our growth-related projects can be funded from development charges due to restrictions in the legislation. As a result, we have used gas tax, capital reserves, and part of our capital levy to fund the, the forecast. The largest component of funding for our non-growth or infrastructure renewal portion of the capital budget is the contribution from operating, followed by equipment reserves and the local infrastructure funding. This slide shows the projected outstanding debt based on our current 10-year capital forecast. This will be revised as we update the long-term financial forecast during 2012. Currently, the only debt projected in the forecast is $2.8 million in 2015 for a harbour dredge and $19 million in 2017 and 19 for a new parking facility. Both of these are considered self-supported debt to be repaid through program-specific reserve funds. And again, this will be updated as part of our long-term financial forecast. Several meetings have been scheduled to review the 2012 budget and allow the public opportunity to provide input. Commissioner will be presenting an overview of the programs within the Commission later this week. They will also address the Budget Committee resolution from the October 12th meeting and review the service level enhancements within their programs, as well as present possible reduction options should the Budget Committee choose to review them. As well, two meetings have been scheduled for public delegations, February 2nd and February 7th, and two meetings for budget deliberations, February 9th and February 14th, if required. And again, Council approval of the 2012 budget is targeted for March the 5th. Again, in response to previous requests from the Budget Committee and members of Council, an amendment proposal form will be emailed to all members of Council to advise staff of proposals they wish considered as the budget is reviewed. We are asking that the form be returned no later than Friday, February 3rd, to give staff time to bring them forward as part of the February 9th Budget Committee meeting. There are many ways for the public to take part in the 2012 budget process. A number of steps have been taken to ensure our residents are informed of the process and the recommended budget. Information is available on the town's website. All of the budget documents distributed today will be on the website shortly. As well, we have copies of the executive summary available here today and complete copies are available for viewing in the clerk's department and the finance department. Residents can provide input through the budget email or by making delegations to the budget committee on February 2nd and 7th. Three budget open houses have also been scheduled to provide an informal setting in which residents may provide input or ask questions regarding the budget. As well, all budget committee meetings will be televised on town TV. And this concludes my overview of the 2012 operating and capital budgets. I would be happy to answer any questions you may have. Following my presentation, Jane Cordemash will provide an overview of the results of the pre-budget consultation which took place in November and December. Thank you very much for the overview. Members of the committee, are there any questions at this time? Councillor Elgar. Okay, sorry about that. Um, thanks very much for the presentation. We've got three relatively large binders in front of us, which we haven't seen until this morning. And when you talked about uh, PB2 and the activity-based cost, like you go back to the performance measures, mm -hmm. are the performance measures in this new book, are they activity-driven or 
uh, like I'm just trying to. There, there are some that are activity driven. We are trying to to go towards more program outcomes. So in the business plans, we've given some higher level program outcomes. A lot of the measures in the the performance measure book are activity driven. So. Um, they'll talk about volumes and things like that, but we are also trying to focus more on the outcomes of what's being achieved in the programs, and we're using that data to then make decisions on how we should be budgeting for things. Should we be putting more resources to improve performance? Do we need to reallocate our resources? So we're, more and more we're using this information to drive our decision making. But my understanding was PB2 got down to activity driven. That it, it was does. from the program as I rolled down through it. And it goes, oh, I'm sorry, I, did, I misinterpreted. Yes, it does go right down to the lower level. So there are measures in there right down to the lowest level of the services and activities provided within those services. Well, I look forward to looking at them because I think that's where we get to with the, the real cost drivers of mm -hmm. our business. Thank you, and thank you for the presentation. There's one thing. Um, that I should have, I, I think it's important that we bring up, and it's uh, the infrastructure renewal. And it goes back to an overhead that was done by uh, Mr. Bloomer a number of years ago with the hot mix paving, which shows where the town was going if in fact we didn't start putting an awful lot of uh, money into that program year after year. And I think it would be helpful um, for everyone to, maybe the people that weren't even on council at the time, to see that slide to show that we, in fact, were not funding for the future for our infrastructure. And it, mm -hmm. it's, kind of a, it's kind of a shocking graph that he presented. And even with what we're doing okay. now, it's not all that exciting, but uh, it's much better than it would have been. So I think if we could pre have that available also would help. We'll okay. do that. Thank you very much. Councillor Tamoff. Thank you very much for your presentation and all your work on this. Um, if I haven't had an opportunity to go through all these books, obviously. <laughs> One of the things we talked about was doing some kind of an overview of, if I want to just look at transit or parks, is there something in here that will give me just a quick overview of what's going on and then without having to go through the whole, if I want additional detail, I can find it further on? What we did with the business plans, we revised them and we tried to make them a little bit more concise and a little bit um, shorter, I guess. Uh, the first page in the business plan tells you the gross expenditures for the program, the revenues associated with that program, the staffing required to deliver it, and, and some key facts. So we tried to do that at the very first page of each business plan so that you can have a quick look at that, and then if you want more details, you go through and read the rest of the program. So I, I guess more specifically, though, and, and I'll use transit as an example because it's an easy one, if I want to look in here and see what's changing this year, will I be able to do that? Yes, you can, in the business plans. Okay. Um, second question had to do with a um, slide and that you had about the capital-driven... Um, sorry. I just wondered if it was broken down, capital-driven operating costs, and there were three things that were... Or three or four things. Is that broken down in the, in the book so we know how much is going to each one? Um, I, I do talk about in the book what, what makes that up. I, off the top of my head, can't remember how much detail I went into, but I also speak about it within the this, uh, this section on program, so it, it is easily available. And my last question is more of a comment, because it's a pet peeve. Why do we continue to call it hot mix paving? Is there any other kind of paving, or could we just call it road paving? I have to refer to the engineers. <laughs> Uh, through you, no, there's several forms of uh, other types of paving. There's, there's concrete that is considered a paving structure. Uh, we had 150 kilometers of cold surface treated roads, which we worked over a 10 year period to eliminate. So hot mixed paving is generally what we have in the town, but we actually have concrete roads and some others. I just don't think the public knows what hot mix paving is, and I think it was more driven before between when it was tar and stone and, and regular asphalt paving. Tar or tar and chip. Well, the stones were in my knees, so... <laughs> anyway, it just seems to be... Uh, before I was on council, I didn't know what it was. I don't think I'm the only one. It just seems to be... We could be clearer on it. Any other members of committee? Any members of council there? No? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I'm going to call for any delegations that are here today who wish to speak to item one. 
Um, subsequent to that, we'll move on to the pre-budget consultation. Are there members of the, of the audience here, public, who would like to provide information to the committee at this point? We're going once, going twice, sold. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate your presentation. I'm sure we'll have lots of discussions going forward. The, uh, I'll need to get a motion at this time to deal with the I'll need a motion to receive the overview materials. Uh, uh, Mayor Burton, all those in favor? That's carried, thank you. Moving on to item number two, which is the 2012 pre-budget consultation. Uh, Ms. Court Mosh, you're going to provide that? Yes, I, <coughs> sorry, yes I am. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to focus on, uh, primarily on the feedback from our most uh, recent online uh, pre-budget consultation exercise, but I've also provided uh, in the package the results of our citizen survey because they provide a good uh, comparator base of statistically valid data. So I think it's important that if people want to uh, cross-reference uh, the data, they can look at the citizen survey information. I also want to highlight, in addition uh, to these to uh, formal pre-budget consultation items. The town is also has a dedicated budget 2012 email and staff has responded directly to uh, comments and questions uh, submitted to the town and they will continue to do so throughout the budget process. Just looking at some of the key findings and I, I want to highlight first of all that one of our community's distinguishing characteristics is a high level of community engagement. And this is, is something that uh, we should be very proud of in this community. And, and our uh, market research firm, Polara, that had done our citizen survey, highlighted that this is not just about the number of people who share their opinions. It's, it's about the intensity of feelings that people have about the community and their willingness to express those opinions. So it is something that really does uh, distinguish Oakville and helps us, I think, to create the programs and services that are valued by our community. In terms of our, our pre-budget consultation, um, I mean, obviously, it's a little bit different to do an online consultation because you do tend to, to attract the people who are more passionate about the uh, specific issue. Uh, in terms of our, our consultation, we did outreach to uh, over 4,000 email addresses on our, our town databases, including our, our Parks and Recreation and our Vision 2057, as well as some of the councillors individual dat uh, databases. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce also helped us out by sending out the uh, survey to 4,000 members of, of their email database. Uh, in the end, there were about 240 completed uh, uh, consultations. And it was something that uh, I think is really important to note in, in the types of responses that we had. Uh, you will see that there are generally some intense feelings expressed <laughs> in the online consultation. And, and I think that is, um, it's something that is very common in, in online communications. You'll just, uh, you, so, so those aren't edited. I just want to highlight that for people. Uh, it's not surprising uh, that given how important our, our programs and services are to the community that overall a majority of our residents, and I will say it's a fairly, it was a small majority, but it was a majority, they do want these programs and services maintained and they are willing to take a tax increase to maintain those programs and services. There's a, a, a smaller number who want, a tax, who want to keep increasing programs and services. Uh, and then there's you know, a, a number of people who also want the town to look at, uh, at cutting programs. Not cutting programs and services, there's very actual little support for that. But they want to look at is it possible to reduce spending without cutting programs and services. Uh, I would say, you know, given this diversity in opinion, um, it is important that we, we look to bridge the gap between these two sides. And I think you can see that there is a shared uh, interest in the efficiency of town programs and services, and it's important that that issue be addressed. Uh, we did start the survey again about, about asking people about the most important issue uh, facing the town. Um, and again, on the citizen survey, people I think were allowed to identify one, whereas uh, on the online survey, people often identified two or three issues that were important to them. Growth and development, population, they continue to remain the, an, an, the most important issue. And I would say traffic and congestion are very related uh, to that issue. 
uh, environment and transit are, uh, are other key issues. And on our citizen survey, I, I recall Pallara indicating last spring, you know, to note that taxes and spending were an increasing uh, issue. I think they had gone from 5% to 13% of uh, people mentioning uh, those issues. And in the online consultation, and again, people who are gonna complete a budget consultation are probably you know, more passionate about these issues, but that, that was a, a much more significant in the online um, consultation. Um, what, what might be surprising uh, to, to some people, and again, I think this is because of the very uh, split opinions, we actually have more people identifying uh, that they want new or more programs uh, than we had people saying they want cuts. So it's, it's you know, it's a very challenging uh, situation for council to and for budget committee to be in. When we conduct our, our citizen survey, we do pairwise testing, which forces residents to choose uh, between priorities. So, uh, you know, I would encourage you again to look, to look at those results uh, because they will identify where people's priorities are. And, and again, you saw some of these issues like protecting neighborhoods and certainly wanting us to make sure we increased uh, development charges to the maximum uh, possible. The natural environment, our parks, our trails, fighting, uh, it was particularly air pollution was a, a critical issue. Those remain uh, very important. Uh, infrastructure, and again, I think you have to look at some of the uh, influence of the, the media coverage uh, of poor infrastructure or problems some of our neighboring municipalities might be running into in terms of keeping their infrastructure in a state of good repair. And that's uh, very important to our community. And, and despite all the new facilities and, and new programs that, uh, that uh, Nancy highlighted over the last five years, there continue to be uh, groups that want more, uh, more facilities and more programs. I don't want to uh, uh, diminish the people who are calling for for program cuts, because that was uh, just slightly under a uh, half. Um, but primarily, again, less support for significant cuts. They don't want necessarily to see programs cut, they just uh, want to see spending cut. Uh, so again, we'll, we'll focus on uh, making sure that we're delivering our programs efficiently as possible. And um, I want to note on this slide, and if you go through the comments, and, and which we did and sort of numerically identify them, for every individual who, who is saying this, this program or services is, is totally a waste of money, you've got to cut it, you'll find somebody else who says this program or services is, is essential to my quality of life, so you need to improve it. And that's the, that's the challenge. And, and again, I think we're looking at you know, how, what is most important to the community and making Oakville the most livable town in, can, in Canada. And that will involve reconciling all these individual views. Um, I would say it's important that we continue to engage the community uh, throughout the budget process. This was just a beginning and it was an opportunity for people to share opinions prior to the documents being tabled. Uh, again, individuals indicated they want to go through the numbers, you know, so to, to spend more time on the budget and they'll have the opportunity uh, to do that. There will be the presentations later this week by the commissioners to give them more information. And again, I would encourage people to come out to the budget open houses, which will be an opportunity to learn more and ask more in an informal environment. I think uh, we'll need to focus on and look at how we can continue to build understanding of, of the challenges that we're facing in the budget. We do want to make sure that citizens have their voices heard. Uh, a lot of people just commented and complimented the budget committee on giving them the opportunity to have their voices heard. So we want to continue to, to build on that. Uh, we'll certainly look at um, identifying the issues that are addressed by the public throughout. And, and as you can see, we've identified some of these concerns. And certainly, I think living in the, in the GTA, uh, there is a focus in the Toronto media, obviously, on what's going on in Toronto. So our residents read a lot about that. There's a lot of focus on what's happening in deficits in the provincial and federal government. So this is the environment. And we, it, you know, we have to work hard to get our message out to residents about the strong financial position in that the municipality of Oakville and, and our financial position. Uh, and certainly, uh, I would say, the community has embraced council's vision of being the most livable town in Canada. And, and that was demonstrated by their support um, for the programs and services provided. So we'll need to, to work on letting them know that uh, fiscal sustainability is, is also a key priority. 
Just looking at some of our next steps, we're going to continue to focus on two-way communication throughout the budget process. Uh, we'll be sharing information. Again, uh, we just launched our, our new website oak, at oakville.ca, uh, so I encourage people to go there. We'll, we'll have all these budget books available online. I know it's a lot of information, but we'll also provide summaries and, and uh, for those people who don't want to go through all the detail, uh, Nancy's presentation will be online as well. Uh, we also have information going up in our community centers and uh, you know, as I said, we'll have our budget open houses. We're also going to do an online uh, forum later this month and we'll be confirming those uh, arrangements. So those people who prefer to use social media, we're gonna take advantage of the town's new social media to allow people to participate uh, through, through uh, Twitter. And uh, finally, with the, you'll have the formal bu budget delegations and, and again, I think what's in, critical in, in public engagement is understanding that different people like to participate in different ways. So we're trying to provide as many opportunities and in as, as many different ways as possible for, for people to share their opinion. So, I mean, again, you've just received the, the raw data of the survey and, and I know it will take time uh, to go through it, but if you have any questions as you do, I'd be happy to answer them. Councillor Johnson. Thank you very much. Um, thank you for your presentation, and you did answer my question, actually. So I'll just point out that uh, all your information is on the new website, which looks great under the Town Hall tab. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Councillor Demoff. The, um, the information you have at the back of this with all the, um, the summaries and the questions, is it possible to get that in, 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 in electronic format? in a format that we can manipulate, and I'll tell you why, because one of the questions you asked was, how important is this service to you? And then you asked how satisfied you were, and I'd really be interested in putting them side by side to see um, for each one how they compare. Um, I don't know if that's possible from what you got. I, I know you can excel from SurveyMonkey, but I don't know, or ex export. I don't know if you can do that or not, though, with those charts. And actually, if you continue just a few pages uh, through in, in the data, we've actually brought those together. So what it'll give you the results for each service, it'll say who thought it was important, who was satisfied with it, who thought it was unimportant and wasn't satisfied and, and who never uses it. So that information is in that data. Yeah, it is, but it takes a while to get it through it. I don't have it in front of me. I can, I'll tell you which page it's on uh, after, yeah. Councillor Elgar. Thank you also for your presentation and the, the survey we have, and the, it's, it's very readable, I think. Um, with regard to uh, increased development charges, I was kind of I was very pleased to see that bu has bubbled to the top. Is that the first time that's showing up at that high a level? Do you, I have to go? I'd have to go back and look at our surveys to see uh, to see if that's a, a new one or not. I just off the top of my head, I can't answer your question. Yeah, I'd be interested because I've never noticed sure. that before, but it really shows how the residents of Oakville have wakened up and they're not, you know, they've wakened up to the game that growth pays for itself, which it doesn't. Yeah. And it's just, I think now the residents saying, hey, let, to the degree we can, let growth pay for itself. Uh, and also, um, back we were talking about uh, we don't want to pay for, I think uh, it was Mr. Green mentioned about how, you know, we don't want to pay for the growth. I think it was some comment like that. But can we highlight how much it is costing us, uh, not because of our uh, because of our municipality, but because of the provincial legislation, which doesn't allow us to uh, recapture the cost of growth fully going forward. Yeah, and I, I would highlight. I, I think uh, again, that message has been a consistent theme of not only budget committee but but council, and so I, I think you are seeing that uh, the public, you know, is building an awareness and understanding. And I, and I believe we can provide uh, more information on that. I, I think, it. Uh, Thank to you. you, Mr. Chairman, certainly with the upcoming work that we're doing on the development charges, I think that's where it will become truly evident, the gap between what the legislation allows us to collect versus what the true cost of providing that capital is. And there will be operating plans that come with it as well. Thank you very much. The one other thing uh, which I think is, is important is our, our actual debt, because as we, we, we're not allowed to have, uh, have a deficit, but we can take on debt, 
but to show what our debt level is percentage wise as opposed to what the province says we can have in debt. And I think it shows a lot of responsibility of the council because it's very easy to have a short term gain in a tax year uh, for long term pain for the residents and I think that in information would be good also. Thank and you. we can make those slides available through the uh, next set of presentations. Mayor Burden. Um, I thought I noticed as, uh, as uh, Ms. Sully went through her presentation, a couple of interesting statistics were brought forward uh, uh, on, on this matter of uh, paying for growth. Uh, a couple stuck out. Uh, growth was 37% uh, of the 59.9 million capital for the uh, budget and 33.3% of that uh, the revenue for for that was um, I'll, I'll state that better 37 percent of the 59.9 million in the capital budget was for growth and 33.3 percent of the 59.9 million revenue was for, was uh, from development charges leaving a gap of 3.7 percent uh, which is probably one of our lower gaps that we've ever had but when you turn to the 10-year forecast uh, the, the difference there uh, grew somewhat. Uh, I noted that uh, it appeared that 72% uh, of um, the cost of growth capital over the 10 years was uh, development charges, and it looked like taxes and debt, which are, uh, debt's just a deferred tax, uh, so the taxes and debt seemed to come together to about 15%. So somewhere between those two Goalposts is uh, the, the size of the problem, I think. We'll look forward to further details. Any others? Any other members of council here be here today? Okay. Uh, I did note that uh, Councillor Johnson just uh, mentioned to me that it uh, looks like the budget materials are all online on the new website okay. already. Great. So for those who might be watching and uh, might wish to flip over to our new website, they'll be able to find a lot of that material, including, I believe, the consultation materials as well. Mayor Burton, you had something to add? Yes, in a late breaking development, um, my office is working on uh, taping a show for the Kojiko Community Channel 23 uh, this Friday, which would be uh, broadcast during the following week, and the topic will be uh, the budget. So there'll be that additional public access. Thank you very much for that. The, um, uh, the only other thing I was going to ask about, and it, and it sort of hits on both the consultation items, if, if you can you go back one, I think it's one slide in your presentation here this one, where you've got a, a bunch of conclusions, and it also was hit in Nancy's uh, presentations around uh, our, our issuance of debt or lack of issuance of debt. Um, I, I know that Mississauga is issuing, I believe it's $20 million of debt in 2012, and they've got a long list of growth in their debt projected in the next 10 years, a very, very sizable increase. and. Um, there was also comments with respect to the uh, contributions to the capital budget from the operating signed uh, versus the amortization of the assets. And there is a slide in the Mississauga budget presentations that I think you were pulling information from. I think their staff went out and pulled a bunch of other municipalities. Could we get that uh, material provided to us on, um, on Thursday? I think that's very useful not only for members of the committee but for the public to understand the degree to which Oakville is in a very very strong uh, position with respect to its dealing with its renewal of it of the infrastructure so your your third point here on this slide um, is in stark contrast to I think some other municipalities where the level of reinvestment is extremely small so okay that's all I had any other members of committee or council who wish to ask any questions, bring anything forward? Okay. Are there any members of the public here today who wish to speak to committee with respect to the pre-budget consultation materials? Going once, going twice, sold. Okay. Uh, then I do need a motion from the committee with respect to receiving the uh, presentation materials. Councillor Johnston. All those in favour? That's carried. We have dealt with the items on the agenda today. There are no confidential items. Uh, we will be returning to 
the committee meetings on Thursday to uh, go through a number of the staff presentations. If we're successful in dealing with all of them on Thursday, then we won't need the meeting on the 20th. Uh, but at this point, we are um, keeping both time slots available uh, in the event that we need that time. Okay? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.